get ready for an epic crossover between My Hero Academia and Demon Slayer. In this thrilling saga, we explore a world where Deku is accused of betrayal. Join us for the exciting premiere of What If, Deku, the Blamed Traitor. Izuku Midoriya, a young man who could catch attention at first sight, couldn't believe what he was hearing. You turned out to be a disappointment. Give me back one for all right now, you're not worthy of being its successor. But how had it come to this? Just weeks before, freckled Izuku's life could be described as perfect. He had good friends, an amazing, wonderful, and beautiful girlfriend, a great, kind, and understanding mother, a superb teacher who even saw him as a son. And it could even be said that Izuku Midoriya had some fans, like little Koda and the cute and sweet Yuri. Both had been saved by Izuku, so they were grateful and started to admire the green-haired boy. But all that went down the drain. Just a day ago, Yue received a file by mail. When Principal Nezu opened it, he realized it contained some videos. Without hesitation, the rodent played them. At first, he was surprised, then he got angry at what he saw. Without making a fuss, he called most of the teachers, although he mainly wanted All Might's presence. Then, he called in Class A. Once everyone was in the same room, Principal Nezu spoke. Nezu, I know you're all wondering why I called you here, and well, without beating around the bush, it's about the UA traitor. It seems we finally discovered who it is. All Might, so who is it, Principal Nezu? Everyone in the room started whispering. Nezu, silence, he then let out a big sigh, it's better if all of you see it. Nezu projected the videos in the room for everyone to watch. After a few minutes, the video ended, leaving a heavy silence in the room, broken by one person. Todoroki, you're the damn traitor. Midoriya, with that said, Todoroki lunged at the freckled boy, who was still in shock from what he had received, and took a blow to his stomach, making him fall to his knees. Apart from Todoroki, no one said anything. Everyone present in that room just looked at Izuku with disdain. Izuku didn't know what to say. He tried to speak but couldn't find the words due to his nerves. Just as he was getting up again, he saw Kirishima about to hit him, but just before the blow landed, someone stood in front of him. Momo, Kirishima, stop. Please, I ask that you stop looking at Izuku with that expression. I know what we all saw in the video, but let's be honest, do you really think Izuku capable of betraying us? When he, more than anyone, has saved us time and time again or even helped us countless times. The girl's words echoed in everyone's minds. She had a point, but on the other hand, how could they explain what they had just seen? Everyone was lost in their thoughts until Todoroki spoke. Todoroki, what we just saw makes sense, Yaoyorozu. If we think about it, why was Midoriya always so interested in everyone's quirks? It's because he wanted to find our weaknesses. Momo, I'm surprised you say that, Todoroki, considering that Izuku helped you overcome the trauma you had with your fire quirk. These words irritated Todoroki, who just clicked his tongue. Before a full-blown war broke out in the room, Nezu spoke. Nezu, I know it's not enough proof to consider you 100% the UA traitor, young Midoriya, but to be honest and to prevent any accidents, Izuku Midoriya, you are indefinitely suspended from UA. Izawa, Principal Nezu, don't you think it's too hasty to suspend him? We don't have a guarantee that the video is 100% reliable. I ask you, please, to request an analysis of the video. Nezu, alright, Izawa, I accept your request, but still, Midoriya remains suspended from UA. Now, everyone, get out of here and return to your respective activities. Everyone, yes. The room slowly emptied, the teachers only glaring at Izuku with contempt, not to mention that their classmates were also watching, some of them wishing to hit the green-haired boy. In the room, only Nezu, Momo, All Might, and Izuku remained. The latter was hugging his girlfriend, who was trying to console him in some way. After a few minutes, the couple was about to leave, but Izuku attempted to talk to All Might. Izuku, All Might, can we talk? But the boy received no response from his teacher, he only kept his head down, making it impossible to look him in the eyes. Izuku repeated the question, receiving the same response. In the end, Izuku left the room with Momo, although he was emotionally quite injured. After what happened in that room, Izuku went home, deeply immersed in his thoughts. What should I do now? What will I tell mom? What will happen to All Might? Those and many more questions swirled in Izuku's mind as he unconsciously arrived home. Feeling a little embarrassed and afraid, he entered his house. Immediately after entering, he looked for his mother to try to talk to her about what had just happened. However, 
What Izuku didn't expect was that his mother had received a call from his teacher, explaining everything that had just happened. After the call, she was quite furious with her son. She believed she had raised her dear son well, but now she realized she had been too soft on Izuku, and she knew it's never too late to correct your children, even if it means doing so with force. Izuku saw his mother in the kitchen, she was chopping some vegetables, so her back was turned to her son. She didn't turn around despite hearing all the noise her son made when he arrived. Izuku, um, hi, mom, I just got back, I guess you didn't hear me, and again, silence. Izuku received no response from his mother, on the contrary, she continued chopping the vegetables, hey mom, is everything okay? Inko, Izuku, why did you do it? Izuku, what do you mean, mom, the boy couldn't finish speaking because he received a strong slap from his mother, leaving him quite surprised and in pain as the slap was so strong that it knocked him down. Inko, I thought I had raised you well, Izuku, but I see now that I didn't. To be the traitor of UA, you're just a damn useless, incapable of doing anything right. I wish I had never had you. Get out of my house, this is no home for a traitor like you. Izuku, still on the floor with tears in his eyes, couldn't believe what his mother had just said to him. His own mother distrusted him. After a few seconds, he got up, grabbed a backpack, packed as much clothes as he could, and left, only saying, Izuku, I'm sorry, mom. After a few hours, Izuku was still walking aimlessly, not wanting to go to his girlfriend because he didn't want to be a burden to her, and besides, he didn't feel emotionally well, he felt like everything he knew was falling apart. After a few minutes, Izuku realized he had received a message. When he realized who the message was from, he was quite relieved, it was from his mentor All Might. The message was short and simple, saying, see you at the beach where you trained. Izuku immediately headed there. Once there, he saw All Might and ran to talk to him, believing that everything would get better. How naive. Just as Izuku reached All Might, the latter grabbed him by the shoulders and said. All Might, give it back. Izuku, what? He said, a little scared, hoping it wasn't what he feared. All Might, I want you to give me back one for all. All Might, I want you to give me back the one for all. That's what Izuku Midoriya's mentor had said, the man he admired so much and even saw as a father figure. The freckled boy couldn't believe what he was hearing, he couldn't believe his own mentor would do this to him. Izuku, please, All Might, think about it. Do you really think I'm the UA traitor? How many times have I worked hard to make you proud? How many people have I saved thanks to this power? How many times have I broken my bones just to be worthy of this power? After saying that last part at the top of his lungs, Izuku began to pant due to the sudden effort he exerted in saying all that. All Might didn't even flinch at his former student's words. All Might, you turned out to be a disappointment. Give me back the one for all right now, you're not worthy to be the successor of such power. Izuku still couldn't believe it, his whole life was crumbling before him, and without further ado, he tore out a strand of hair and handed it roughly to All Might. Izuku, take your stupid power. I don't care anymore, I don't even want to be a hero anymore seeing how everyone doubts me, even you, whom I admire the most, turned your back on me. But I shouldn't be surprised, even my mother hates me now. With that said, Izuku turned around and left the place emotionally hurt. All Might, it won't be easy, but I will find someone worthy to be the successor of the one for all. In the meantime, this power will be safeguarded until a worthy successor appears. After a few hours of his little meeting with the man who was his mentor, the freckled one found himself walking aimlessly again. He had a lost look in his eyes, a bit swollen from crying. He arrived at a small park, sat on a bench, and tried to reflect on everything that had happened. In such a short time, his life took a 180 degrees turn, all his loved ones had turned their backs on him. Eventually, sleep overcame him on that small bench. In all his life, Izuku never thought he would be in this situation. He woke up because he started to hear news being broadcasted by a radio, and in these last weeks, the cases of missing people have increased, the police are still investigating this whole incident. According to the police, it is believed to be the work of the League of Villains. We'll inform you more as soon as we have more information. Izuku, so they're still up to their tricks, huh? I shouldn't care about any of that anymore, after all, I have no way of stopping them now. The freckled one was taken out of his thoughts by receiving a message. He looked at his phone, which despite having almost no battery, still worked, and saw that the message was from his girlfriend, Momo. The message said, come to my house, we have something important to talk about. Under different circumstances, he would have been happy to receive a message from his girlfriend, 
but this time it wasn't like that for some reason Izuku had a bad feeling, maybe it was just his imagination, but something in him said that everything was about to break completely. Without further ado, he got up from the bench and went to his girlfriend's house. After a few minutes, he arrived at the Yaoyorozu residence, he knocked on the door, and after a few minutes, Momo opened the door. There was the woman the freckled one loved so much, the woman who had helped him countless times as he had helped her. For Izuku, she was the perfect woman he swore to protect no matter what, even if that meant sacrificing his life. For some reason, being in front of Momo was like time stood still for him, he remembered how it all started, how it started first with a friendship. Izuku remembered the first time he talked to Momo, how she encouraged him when he lost to Tokoyami, how she saved him from the Nomu at the camp. After a few seconds, Momo's parents came out and stood behind her, both holding onto their daughter's shoulders, and then she spoke. Momo, we can't be together anymore, Midoriya. We're done. Those words echoed in Izuku's mind, we're done, they repeated over and over in the green-haired boy's mind, who could only say. Izuku, please, not you tear started to fall from the freckled boy's face Momo, don't turn your back on me, please, I need you now more than ever. Everyone has left me, my mother kicked me out of the house, All Might turned his back on me, all of UA thinks I'm the traitor, and now you. Momo, I'm sorry, Midoriya. Don't ever come looking for me again, don't even speak to me. That's my final word. Now, leave. Everything the girl said was said with a completely serious look, she didn't hesitate for a moment, and then Izuku understood. Even she had turned her back on him. Without more to say, Momo and her parents entered their house, and Izuku simply left the residence. Izuku walked like a zombie, his gaze completely lifeless, looking quite miserable. He was so distracted that he didn't realize people around him were just staring and whispering. He was snapped out of his trance when he reached a row of televisions on the street, all tuned to the news channel. They said, in other news, it has been revealed from UA who the traitor in the institution was, and it's none other than Izuku Midoriya. Izuku was dumbfounded, now he was national news, and then he realized that everyone was whispering and looking at him with contempt. Everything around him started to spin, he began to sweat profusely, feeling extremely nervous. People started to insult him and even throw garbage at him. Izuku could only run away from there, and he went to all the places he could think of, eventually arriving at UA. He saw his former teacher Aizawa outside the school, who approached him. Aizawa, I'm glad you're okay, Midoriya. I think you already know that someone from the institution went to the media and accused you without hesitation of being the traitor of UA. I know it's not easy, but I know I can prove your innocence, Izuku. Trust me. But Izuku didn't say anything, he kept his gaze lowered. Aizawa, come, maybe seeing Iri and Kota will cheer you up. Izuku followed Aizawa to a room where both children were. They kicked him in both legs upon seeing Izuku, which surprised the freckled boy because he didn't expect both children to do that. Kota, what's a fake hero doing here? Get out of here, traitor. Iri, you're worse than Chisaki, I hope you die. Aizawa, Iri. Kota, what's wrong with both of you? Izuku is not a traitor. Iri, liar. We saw the video, and Class A told us everything made sense. Faced with this, Izuku simply left the room without saying anything. He no longer cared about anything, he thought it was a waste of time to try to defend himself, and now, finally, Izuku Midoriya was completely heartbroken. Aizawa didn't want to follow the freckled boy, he didn't know what to say to him or how to act with him, so he let him go. After a few hours, Izuku was hungry, his stomach growling, begging for food. He knew that if he went to a fast food place, he would only receive insults from people, so without further ado, he ventured into the forest in the hope of finding food. It wouldn't be easy, but, thanks to his extensive knowledge, he could find food. After walking for a few hours in the forest, he found an old abandoned temple. He entered and noticed that there was no one, and then he searched for something useful. In a room, he found some sacks of rice, he was quite happy because he could eat. Perhaps it wouldn't be a delicacy, but at least he had food. After moving the sacks of rice, he realized that there was a door in the floor, and with some difficulty, he opened it. He went down to the small room and realized that there was a box covered in dust. The young man ran his hand over the box, revealing that it said Demon Slayer. After eating, Izuku opened the box. Inside were a Nikiran sword, a demon hunter uniform, and a book. He started reading the book. Basically, it contained information about demons. It said that no one knew exactly how long demons had existed. These creatures were nocturnal beings with extraordinary and unique abilities. 
There was once an organization of demon hunters, but it disbanded for unknown reasons. The book mentioned twelve powerful demons known as the twelve demon moons, with the most dangerous being the upper moons, identified by kanji in both eyes, while the lower moons had it in only one. It also mentioned the demon king, Muzan Kibitsuji, who sought perfection but never achieved it. The book explained that demon hunters used Nikurin swords to kill demons because they were made from a special mineral that absorbed sunlight, the only thing that could harm demons. Hunters developed different techniques to match demons. The book also revealed the demon's weakness, decapitation with a Nikurin sword would prevent them from regenerating their head, causing them to vanish slowly. As Izuku kept reading, he realized the author was a flame-breathing user. Detailed training to master this breathing technique was included. Finally, the book explained how breathing techniques originated from the sun breathing style, with only one known user. There was a brief explanation of how it worked. After reading, Izuku grasped the Nikurin sword tightly, and it turned a faint green. It was a lot of information to absorb, but Izuku wondered if demons still existed. After much thought, he decided to develop flame breathing. Perhaps, with luck, he could even master sun breathing. Even if demons were no longer around, these skills could help him fight villains and maybe even destroy the League of Villains once and for all. Six months had passed since the accusation that Izuku was the traitor of UA. During this time, things hadn't gone well for the institution. Many doubted the authenticity of the videos, which had even circulated on the internet. Many came out to defend the poor boy, including prominent pro heroes like Endeavor and Hawks. Aizawa constantly urged Principal Nezu to investigate the video, but Nezu ignored him. So, Aizawa began analyzing the video himself to debunk it. Meanwhile, Izuku Midoriya spent these six months training to master flame breathing. It hadn't been easy, but his previous training had given him the stamina and control over the sword. It could be said that Izuku had mastered 90% of flame breathing, while he only had 30% control over sun breathing. Even so, whenever he used a stance from sun breathing, he ended up extremely exhausted. Since he read that book, there wasn't a day he hadn't trained, all with the intention of saving people. Perhaps he couldn't be a hero anymore, but now he could be a guardian of the night. Izuku was walking through the city in his makeshift new outfit, made from some old rags. It wasn't exactly pretty, but at least it helped him blend in a bit, although some people were scared by his appearance. He arrived at a restaurant, ready to eat something different after six months of just rice. As he waited for his food, he saw the news on TV, reporting, once again, a large number of passengers have disappeared on a city train. No traces found. Police are still investigating. Then Izuku thought, could it be a villain or perhaps a demon? Whatever the answer, after receiving his order, he headed to catch the train. If the rumors were true, he might encounter a villain, and Izuku Midoriya was ready to deal with it. He bought a ticket at the station and boarded the train, a bit of a hassle hiding his Nikurin. Once on the train, he took a seat and waited for it to depart, unaware that the events of that night would mark him for life, not just him, but all those who had doubted him. Izuku had already gotten on the train, still wearing his disguise, he simply sat down and waited for his ticket to be stamped. The train journey was quite long, as it went from one city to another and therefore had to pass through a large forest. Izuku was unsure if the villain would actually appear on that train, but he was already there and it was too late to turn back. After just a few minutes, the ticket inspector arrived. Izuku just handed over his ticket, but when it was stamped, there was a brief blackout on the train which alarmed the crew. After that, Izuku sensed a great amount of energy in another carriage. He stood up from his seat and drew his Nikurin sword. Izuku, please everyone, step back. You might wonder why I have a sword on the train, but now's not the time for that. There's a villain on this train. Subsequently, Izuku went to the next carriage and for the first time saw a demon. Its skin looked strange and its limbs were quite long. All the passengers screamed and tried to flee upon seeing it. Izuku then attacked. Izuku, flame breathing, first form, sea of fire. With a swift motion, he sliced the demon's head off. All of this was witnessed by the passengers who were quite impressed that the boy had defeated the creature in just one blow. They began to congratulate him for his great feat. Izuku blinked and suddenly found himself not on the train anymore. He looked around and realized he was in his old dorm room at UA. Izuku, but. How? I was on the train, facing a demon. How did I get here? Was it all. A dream? He couldn't dwell on it as someone knocked on his door. A girl he knew well entered with breakfast for both of them. She closed the door behind her, placed the food on the desk, and sat on the bed next to the green-haired boy. Izuku couldn't believe his eyes. It was his ex-girlfriend, 
Momo Yaoirozu. Izuku started crying upon seeing her again after so long and hugged her tightly, surprising Momo. Momo, what's wrong, Izuku? Are you okay? Why are you crying? Izuku, I. I had a terrible nightmare. You weren't by my side. You left me when I needed you the most. Momo, silly, I would never leave you, Izuku. I love you. It was just a silly nightmare. Izuku, you're right, Momo. It was just a nightmare. Meanwhile, on the train, specifically in the first carriage, the lower moon one, Inmu, was present. Inmu, ha ha ha, keep having sweet dreams. So that when the time is right, I can devour all of you on this train. Now Izuku was in the main lounge of UA's dormitories, surrounded by all his friends, including All Might, Aizawa, the adorable Eerie, and little Koda. They were happily having a good time. Izuku believed that everything that had happened was just a horrible nightmare. For the first time in a long time, he felt good being with his loved ones. He even received a call from his mother and was glad to hear her voice, they talked about various mundane things. Now Izuku was pensive as he looked out a window when suddenly his reflection said something, wake up. This is all a dream. The train is under attack. Wake up quickly. Izuku, it's true. I was on the train. None of that was a dream. It's all real. I'm in a dream. And without realizing it, he was once again with all his loved ones. Izuku, how do I get out of here? Right after saying that, Izuku was surrounded by green flames. It was his unbreakable spirit trying to bring him back to reality. Everyone in the room watched as Izuku burst into flames, alarming them all. After a few seconds, the fire dissipated from Izuku's body, revealing the outfit he had made himself, along with his Nikiran sword. Everyone was surprised by the young man's attire. Izuku, I'm sorry, but I must leave. Without saying more, he made his escape. But how could he get out of there? That was something the young man still wasn't entirely clear on. He left Yue and as he turned a corner, he saw his mother. Inko, where are you going, Izuku? I brought a lot of food for you and your friends. Izuku stood there silently, just lowering his gaze while processing what had just happened. His classmates, teachers, Iri, and Koda had arrived along with their teacher Aizawa. They were all surprised by the sudden change in the green-haired boy's attitude. Izuku, I really want to stay here. I wish I could turn around and be with you all, but you're not real. All of you, except for Aizawa-sensei, turned your backs on me, betrayed me. So, no matter what, I must move forward. Right after that, little Iri tried to chase Izuku while saying, Don't leave us, Izuku. Those few words shattered the freckled boy, who started running while tears streamed from his eyes. Izuku, I'm sorry, Iri. I know I let you down, but there's not a day that goes by when I don't think of you. You're always in my heart. After running for a while, Izuku once again questioned how he could get out of there, and then an idea crossed his mind. Izuku, but if it doesn't work, if what happens in this dream is reflected in real life, then. I. I. There's no time to hesitate. I'll do it. I'll cut my own throat. Izuku knelt down and placed his katana at his neck, and in one swift motion, he cut it. Izuku woke up abruptly, screaming and sweating. He had finally managed to escape the dream. He was quite shaken, and then he sat up and decided to search for the demon. It wasn't difficult for him to perceive its thirst for blood. It was atop the first carriage. Izuku climbed onto the train and found the demon, who was surprised that someone could escape its blood dream. In Mu, well, it seems we have a restless little mouse. Izuku noticed that one of the demon's eyes had a kanji, which said lower one. The freckled boy then understood. It was one of the twelve demon moons. With determination, he said. Izuku, I'll end you for invading others' dreams. You'll pay for your sins. Flame breathing, first form, sea of fire. Izuku lunged at the demon, which only resorted to one of its techniques. In Mu, demon blood technique, hypnotic whispers. And in a swift move, Inmu put Izuku back to sleep, his body almost falling off the train, but he quickly stood up again, surprising the demon. Inmu, didn't work? Izuku attacked the demon, cutting off a few hairs. Then the demon used the same technique again but got the same result. Inmu was totally surprised. He thought the boy was immune to his blood dream, but he realized shortly after. Inmu, I see. It's not that my technique is ineffective against him. It puts him in a dream, but when he realizes he's in one, he commits suicide to wake up. It takes great determination to do such an act. This kid has nerves of steel. 
Izuku finally managed to reach the demon's head, which he cut off with a magnificent technique. Once Izuku achieved this, he felt a bit tired but wondered why there was no change. According to the book, when you decapitate a demon, it should vanish, but there was no change. At that moment, Inmu began to laugh, and his head rose with a kind of tentacle. Izuku looked at all this, surprised. Inmu, ha ha ha, that look on your face brings me so much pleasure. You're probably wondering why you didn't kill me. Well, it's simple. I merged with this train to devour all the passengers in one go. Therefore, this neck is nothing but a simple illusion. My real neck is hidden on this train. I wonder if you can find it before I kill everyone. Ha ha ha, hero. Inmu then vanished into Izuku without delay. Izuku quickly analyzed the situation. If the demon had merged with the train, it meant its neck could be in the main carriage. The theory made sense after all, that's where the demon originally was. So, he quickly headed to the main carriage. Izuku, flame breathing, third form, burning universe. With his attack, the young man destroyed the roof of the carriage and then attacked the yard, revealing that indeed the demon's neck was there. Izuku made a swift attack to finish off the demon, but his attack was repelled by the demon, who covered its neck with flesh and produced several tentacles with eyes, each bearing a kanji that said dream. Izuku knew that if he fell asleep there again, he could die. But his new outfit helped him blend in, and he wasn't sure where exactly the eyes were looking. He descended, leaving behind a barrage of attacks. And just before reaching the neck, he employed a stance, the fourth one, to break the flesh covering the bone. When he finally saw the bone again, Izuku decided to use the sun breathing this time. Izuku, please, let this cut the demon's neck in one stroke. Sun breathing, second form, blue sky. And then, in a 360 degree cut, the green haired boy had managed to sever the demon's neck. A loud scream of pain ensued, and Izuku understood that it was the demon who had finally lost. But Inmu wasn't willing to lose so easily. Even with his last breath, he would try to kill as many people as possible. But then Izuku used a plethora of techniques and movements. His hood fell, revealing his face, but he continued to protect all the passengers, and at one point, the train derailed. When everything calmed down, Izuku began to help the passengers who were stuck on the train. The young man had managed to save everyone on the train by himself. There were some injuries, but no one was seriously hurt. Many people realized that he was the supposed traitor of UA, but with this action, he made it clear that he would never betray anyone. As for Izuku's condition, he was quite exhausted due to the many techniques he had to use. After a few minutes, Inmu emerged from the train wreckage. He was nothing but a small mass of flesh crawling. Inmu, damn it, why did this have to happen? Weren't the hunters supposed to be gone? How could this brat hurt me? Damn it, damn it, I hate this. Even though I've lived for many years, I could never challenge a blood duel to the upper moons. Those demons whose hierarchy hasn't changed in hundreds of years, those demons who have killed countless hunters and even professional heroes. Ah, I hate this, I hate this damn nightmare. Inmu had finally been defeated. Within minutes, a helicopter from a news station arrived at the scene, realizing that everyone was saved thanks to Izuku Midoriya. The main news on all channels was the train accident caused by a villain, but they focused more on reporting that only one hero stopped the villain and it was none other than Izuku Midoriya, the supposed traitor of UA. The news posed the question, did we all judge Izuku Midoriya wrongly? Is he truly innocent? The news was watched all over Japan. Izuku's mother couldn't stop crying at the sight of her son on screen, feeling quite depressed after reflecting on what she had said to him. All Might also watched, with only a sad look on his face, wondering, have I made a mistake? Have I misjudged young Midoriya? The green-haired boy's classmates also watched the news, each reflecting on what had happened. Perhaps they had been too harsh on him? Momo was at her parents' house, watching the television with a big smile, repeatedly saying, With this, everyone will trust you again, Izuku. Even Aizawa was with Iri, watching the news. The latter smiled upon seeing her little student, while Aizawa looked at the TV with a great sadness reflected in his face. Izuku was admiring the surroundings, still unable to believe he had saved all the passengers and defeated the demon. He let out a small sigh of relief, but all the calmness vanished when a loud bang echoed in the area. Everyone looked toward the direction where a large dust cloud appeared. When it cleared, they saw the figure of a man, covered in tattoos, and Izuku noticed kanji in both eyes, reading Third Upper Moon. All of Izuku's friends watched the TV very closely. They saw what seemed to be another villain arriving at the battlefield. They could only feel worry for Izuku, the freckled young man. 
Izuku couldn't believe what he saw. He could only wonder, why is Upper Moon 3 here? Why appear now? The demon narrowed his eyes and looked in Izuku's direction. In a quick move, he rushed towards some injured people near Izuku. Izuku swiftly unsheathed his sword. Izuku, breath of flame, second form, rising sun. In a swift strike, Izuku cut the demon's arm in two, avoiding his attack. The demon quickly retreated and adjusted his arm. Question mark, nice sword. It's been centuries since I've seen one like that. The atmosphere felt heavy, with a strong thirst for blood. Izuku, I don't understand why someone like you would attack injured civilians. Question mark, I just thought they would get in our way, and I want to talk to you. Izuku, do I know you? It's the first time I've seen you, but I already dislike you. Question mark, really? Well, I hate the weak. My name is Akaza, and you're Izuku Midoriya, right? This surprised the green-haired boy. How did he know him? Akaza, I'll take that silence as a yes. Midoriya, we've been tracking you for the past few months, and we want to offer you a great deal. Why don't you become a demon? Izuku, no way, I refuse. Akaza, I can see you're quite strong, with a great fighting spirit. Think about it. If you become a demon, you'll be a thousand times stronger, since you'll live longer. You'll have enough time to polish each of your skills. Come on, what are you waiting for? Become a demon. Izuku, aging and dying is the beauty of being human. No matter what, I will never become a demon. A great silence fell over the place, overshadowed by the noise of the helicopter broadcasting everything live. Akaza, I see. Akaza was the first to move, unleashing his technique, destructive death, compass needle. A large snowflake appeared on the ground where the demon stood, with several ancient kanji characters written on it. Akaza, if you won't be a demon, then I'll have to kill you. Akaza swiftly moved towards Izuku, who blocked or dodged the Oni's attacks as best he could. Akaza, in all my years as a demon, I've never killed a user of the Breath of Flame, nor has any hunter or hero agreed to my little invitation. Akaza launched a barrage of blows, which Izuku blocked. Akaza, why do you think that is? As a master of martial arts, I can't understand their logic. They say to be a demon, you must be chosen. In one of the attacks Izuku blocked, he saw a small opening to cut the demon's arm. The demon regenerated it in the blink of an eye, then immediately struck the sword with his fist, impaling it on the Nikirin. Akaza, and to see the pathetic decline of someone blessed with power like yours hurts me more than you think. It's better to die now, Midoriya, while you're still young and strong. To push the demon away, Izuku launched a powerful attack, making him retreat. Akaza then jumped back and activated another technique in the air. Akaza, destructive death, empty style. Izuku stood, waiting for the blow, when suddenly something hit him. Immediately, he went into a defensive stance, trying to block as many hits as possible. Akaza pressed harder and harder, and as soon as Izuku could deploy a stance, he did. Izuku, breath of flame, fourth form, blaze wave. It took a few minutes for Akaza to stop pressing with that ability, leaving a considerable distance between him and the green-haired boy. Izuku, if I stay at this distance, it will be difficult for me to cut his head. If that's the case, Izuku swiftly moved to stand in front of the demon. Izuku, I'll have to get closer. Izuku launched an attack intending to cut off the Oni's head, but the demon swiftly dodged it. Akaza, what wonderful reaction speed. Izuku and Akaza continued exchanging attacks. The green-haired boy managed to avoid all of the Oni's blows until one caught him off guard, sending him flying into one of the carriages. Everyone present gasped in fear at the heavy blow the young man received. Meanwhile, All Might, from his home, kept saying, Hang in there, young Midoriya, help is on the way. Izuku's mother repeated over and over, You can do it. His ex-partner, Momo, had a horrified look as she begged her beloved not to die that night. Akaza, are you ready to become a demon? Izuku? Think about it, if you do, we'll work as a team. Imagine how invincible we would be. Izuku, I refuse. I'll say it again, I hate you with all my soul, and I will not become a demon, understand, the young man got up again, launching himself without hesitation towards the Oni. Izuku, breath of flame, third form, burning universe. Akaza dodged the blow at the last second. Akaza, wonderful, that's a great attack. Destructive death, war style. Izuku blocked an attack that sent him flying a few meters back due to the great force, but he quickly got back into the battle. 
he couldn't afford to leave any gaps. In one of the many attacks Izuku launched, Akaza jammed the sword into his arm. Akaza, seriously, don't you understand yet? It's useless for you to try to win this battle. In the end, you'll die, Izuku. Akaza stepped back and then lunged forward again, delivering a barrage of blows, one of which grazed Izuku, causing him to bleed from his forehead. Izuku, breath of flame, first form, sea of fire. Akaza quickly blocked the attack with both arms, which, after being cut off, immediately regenerated, and Akaza attacked Izuku again. Akaza, it's a shame to have to kill you here. You have a long way to go to reach your potential. The Oni managed to land a blow on Izuku, hitting him directly in the ribs, which could be heard cracking. This caused great pain to Izuku, who only let out a small groan of pain and stepped back a little. Izuku, second form, rising sun. Akaza took a small leap back to avoid the boy's attack and then charged at him again. Akaza, maybe one or two years from now, you'll be much stronger, much more refined, much deadlier than you can imagine, Izuku. The Oni struck Izuku, who tried to block it, but the attack deflected the boy's sword and hit him directly in the eye, shattering it. Izuku recoiled in pain but then unleashed several techniques. Izuku, third form, burning universe, Izuku charged at the demon, who admired the boy's great strength. Fourth form, blaze wave, the attack made Akaza recoil. Akaza, destructive death. Izuku, fifth form, fire tiger. Akaza, disorder. Both were about to collide with each other. Izuku quickly launched an attack intending to finally cut off the demon's head, but the Oni simply dodged it, countering with a few strikes. Izuku didn't move, he stood still, panting from the enormous amount of energy he had to exert. The civilians in the area couldn't believe what was happening. They couldn't believe how the boy was being massacred right in front of them. Due to the many hits the Oni gave him, Izuku was bleeding. Meanwhile, at their respective homes, All Might was making several calls to different professional heroes to come to the scene and support the young man. Izuku's mother was shedding a lot of tears, saying, Please don't die, Izuku. Momo was one of the most damaged, with a lost look in her eyes as tears fell, repeating, Forgive me, Izuku. Both his former classmates and teachers watched with great frustration as they tried to encourage him from where they stood. Little Iri was crying, saying, No, Izuku, please forgive me. Izuku remained motionless, his gaze reflecting pain and desperation. Akaza, don't tell me it's over already, don't die, Midoriya. Even if you're willing to sacrifice your body, it'll all be in vain in the end, Izuku. All those wonderful cuts you made on me have completely healed, see? On the other hand, your left eye is destroyed, you have several broken ribs, and many of your organs are injured, it's quite a big damage. If you were a demon, you'd heal in the blink of an eye, if you were a demon, all this would be nothing more than mere scratches. Izuku stopped gasping and began emitting a large amount of green energy, surprising Akaza. Akaza, Midoriya, what are you planning? Izuku, I'm going to fulfill my duty as a future hero, no matter what happens, I won't let anyone here die. I'll do as much damage as possible, it'll be my ultimate attack. Flame breathing, final technique. With that, Izuku took an attacking stance, releasing even more energy that shook Akaza. Akaza, what a wonderful fighting spirit, even with all those bodily injuries, he has a true determination, and that posture is more than perfect. Ha ha ha, you really should become a demon, Midoriya. Then we could keep fighting for all eternity. Izuku, keep your heart burning and surpass your limits because I am Izuku Midoriya. Ninth Stance, Purgatory. Akaza, Destructive Death, Annihilation. They both launched towards each other with their most powerful techniques, they both impacted, and a large cloud of dust rose, making it impossible to see what the conclusion was. After about two minutes, the dust cloud cleared, revealing Izuku Midoriya's stomach had been pierced by the demon's fist, which had several cuts on its body, cuts that regenerated. Akaza, it's over, Midoriya, you don't have time left, tell me, tell me you'll be a demon. Listen, you're one of the mighty chosen ones. At that moment, Izuku had a small childhood memory come to mind. Izuku, so it's true, when someone is about to die, their whole life flashes before them. And there was a little Izuku in an All Might costume, I want to be a hero to save everyone with a big smile. Izuku understood, he couldn't give up, so with the little strength he had left, he swung a cut to the Oni's neck, catching Akaza off guard, who was surprised by the boy's determination. Akaza was frustrated, he didn't like having a sword at his throat, 
he wanted to end this as soon as possible, so with his other arm, he threw a punch towards the freckled youth's face. But Izuku managed to stop the punch, Akaza was in trouble. Akaza, did he stop me? What incredible strength he has, even when my right arm pierced his stomach. Just then, Akaza noticed that dawn was beginning behind Izuku. Akaza, this is bad, the sun is almost here, I must kill him quickly and get out of here, the Oni tried to free himself from Izuku, but he realized he was stuck. Akaza, I can't get my arm out. Izuku wasn't going to back down, he trusted that the sun would burn the demon or he could cut off its head. The sun was getting closer, and the first rays were starting to show. Akaza, this is bad, it'll be daylight soon, I have to get out of here, I have to, ah. The Oni let out a loud scream of frustration, echoing in everyone's ears. Izuku, I'm not letting you go, not until I rip off this damn head, ah. Akaza, move. The sun was getting closer, and Izuku's sword was cutting deeper into the demon's neck with each move. Somehow or another, the demon was going to die there. Just then, reinforcements finally arrived, several professional heroes came, with Endeavor being the first to arrive, heading to help the freckled boy. Endeavor, hold on a little longer, kid. After a few seconds, Endeavor was very close to the boy, Akaza, seeing this and with the little strength he had left, tore off both arms to free himself from Izuku. At the same time, he caused a small shockwave that knocked down the professional hero, who watched as the Oni soared into the sky and, after a few spins, flew as far as possible. Akaza, now I have to find a place where the damn sunlight won't reach me. After separating from the demon, Izuku fell forward due to the numerous wounds he had. Endeavor chose to assist the young man instead of pursuing the demon, for now, his vital condition was the most important. In a small whisper, Izuku said, No. Don't. Let. It. Escape. Izuku woke up in the hospital. He looked around and saw some machines. He also noticed several bouquets of flowers beside his bed. Izuku, what happened? Izuku couldn't continue his thoughts as someone entered the room. Recovery girl, you finally woke up, kid. We were quite worried. Izuku, how long was I asleep? How? Did you save me? I swear I was stabbed in the stomach. Recovery girl, well, you were asleep for two weeks. As for how we saved you, it was thanks to all the doctors who treated you, including me. It was quite difficult to close the wound and recover your left eye. It took us more than 12 hours to heal you as much as we could. You know, I almost prefer when you just broke your bones. You gave me a big scare when I saw you so badly injured. Izuku, why did you help me? You think I'm a traitor? Recovery girl, it's not my place to tell you what happened. Don't worry, you'll get answers from Izawa as soon as he can come. For now, a friend will come to take care of you in a while. See you later, Izuku. Izuku had many questions in his mind, but it wasn't the time to think about them. He had to rest to recover, and as soon as he was in a better condition, he had to leave that hospital. But he had a great uncertainty. Which friend was going to come to take care of him? According to Izuku, he no longer had anyone, not even a single friend. Who sent all those flowers? Are they for him? These and other questions spun around in the freckled boy's mind as he simply lay down to rest for a while. About two hours passed until someone opened the door. Bakugo, hey nerd. Izuku, what are you doing here, Kachan? If you're here to insult me, save it, but he couldn't finish speaking as Bakugo interrupted him. Bakugo, don't get it twisted, Deku. I'm here to take care of you for a while. Also, I brought this basket full of food prepared by my mother. You know, she's been worried about you since I told her what happened. She got even more worried when you disappeared. She asked me to bring you all this food. We were just told you woke up recently, maybe she'll come to see you. Plus, disappearing for six months and then appearing in a big spectacle, typical of the hero Deku. Izuku, I'm no longer an aspiring hero, and now I might not even want to be one. I don't have one for all anymore, All Might took it from me because he really believes I'm the UA traitor. Bakugo, what an idiot, believing you're the UA traitor. What morons. Izuku, wait, do you also think I'm the traitor? Bakugo, Deku. I know you better than anyone. We've been something like friends since we were kids. You can be many things, but a traitor, you'd never be that. Izuku only looked at Bakugo with a sad yet joyful gaze. He felt happy that someone never really thought he was a traitor. Bakugo stayed with Izuku for a while, helped him eat, and they talked a little. Izuku didn't mention anything about demons or even wanted to talk about his fight that night. Bakugo, well, nerd, it's getting late. Visiting hours will end in about three hours. 
Aizawa Sensei will come to talk to you in a moment, and maybe more people will come to see you tomorrow. I'm leaving, see you soon. Izuku. Izuku, goodbye, Kachan. Izuku felt quite tired, although he also felt quite happy. Spending time with Bakugo, even if just for a while, made him forget about everything for a bit. But the fight he had crossed his mind. That demon was quite strong. Izuku knew he hadn't done any harm, and then he understood the vast power difference between humans and demons. He remembered the Oni's proposal, what do you say if you become a demon, Izuku? And Izuku pondered it. For a moment, the idea of being a demon crossed his mind. He had nothing to lose in this world anymore, so perhaps that would be his fate, to be a demon. Izuku was snapped out of his thoughts as someone knocked on his door. Izuku, come in. The door then opened, and Aizawa, Principal Nezu, All Might, and Chief of Police Kenji Tsurugame entered the room. After everyone entered the room, Izuku remained calm at all times. His expression never changed, he always maintained a calm gaze. Aizawa, hello, Midoriya. We're all glad that you've woken up and are feeling better. Izuku, tell me, Sensei, is that true? I can believe it from you, but it seems to me that there are people who would have preferred if I had died that night. All Might, young Midoriya, we. Aizawa, calm down, All Might, all in good time. Izuku, first of all, we're glad to inform you that it has finally been concluded that the video of your supposed betrayal is false. It's a very well-made montage but lacks certain credibility. In the end, the truth was uncovered, and therefore, you can return to UA. Don't worry, the media has been informed that the video was false, and that information is being spread. Nezu, we would be delighted to have you back at the institution, young Midoriya. The doors of UA are open to you. Izuku remained calm, never getting worked up. He just kept his gaze low and listened attentively to every word from Aizawa and Principal Nezu. Izuku, I. I need to think about it. Those were the only words Izuku said after what had been said before. Aizawa felt sadness, something told him that the boy wouldn't return to school. Kenji Tsurugame, all right, next, young Midoriya, I have some questions I'd like to ask you. Can I? Izuku, go ahead. Izuku was a little nervous. He knew they wouldn't believe anything about the demons, they would simply think he was crazy. So, he'd have to lie. Izuku, I was just on that train because I wanted to leave this city. As for what happened, I know the same or perhaps even less than you. There was a villain, and I stopped him, that's all. And I don't regret doing it because if I had stayed idle, many people would have died. Kenji Tsurugame, all right, can you tell me about the villain? What quirk did he have? Do you know where he is? Izuku was getting more nervous with each question. Izuku, I don't know much about the villain. The night was very dark, and it was hard for me to see him clearly. As for his quirk, I really don't know for sure what it was, let alone where he might be. It was the best Izuku could come up with, hopefully, they believe everything he said. Kenji Tsurugame, all right, last questions. What do you know about the villain you faced after the train derailed? Izuku, I don't know much about him, all I know is that he's very strong. I also don't know what his quirk is. Kenji Tsurugame, Endeavor told us he saw him regenerating his arms after he separated from you. Do you think he has multiple quirks? Is he a follower of All for One? Izuku, no. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't work with All for One, and as for whether he can regenerate, I'm not very sure. I had lost a lot of blood, and I don't remember much about that. Kenji Tsurugame, all right, that will be all. Endeavor will come first thing tomorrow, he wants to ask you some questions. Izuku, okay. Everyone was about to leave the room except All Might, who stayed behind to speak privately with Izuku. After everyone left the room, All Might spoke. All Might, young Midoriya, I know you've been through a lot, but I would like you to have one for all again. A heavy silence filled the room. Izuku stared out the window, listening to the former symbol of peace, but he remained unmoved by what was said to him. Minutes passed, and Izuku didn't reply. All Might felt nervous for the first time, he didn't recognize the freckled boy anymore, and this change was noticed by everyone who knew him. All Might, young Midoriya, did you hear what I said? Izuku, yes, All Might, I heard you, and my answer is no. I don't want one for all. I don't want it out of pity. Also, do you remember what you said to me? If I recall correctly, you told me, you don't deserve to have this power. Well, maybe you were right. All Might, I know I was quite harsh with you, young Midoriya. I let my anger get the best of me. It blinded me completely. I deeply regret everything I said that night, so please, 
forgive me, and please consider returning to UA. Izuku, I don't need your false apologies. Besides, I'm not going back to UA. I don't want to return to a place full of hypocrites and ingrates. All Might, young Midoriya, please don't say that. Have you forgotten what your dream is? Didn't you want to be the next symbol of peace? Izuku, that was a stupid dream. I was living under a foolish fantasy. Now, I have other goals, and please, I ask you to leave. I'm very tired and would like to rest. All Might, all right, young Midoriya. But I'll come back tomorrow to try to talk to you some more. Rest, and again, I apologize. After that, All Might left the room, leaving only Izuku. It was quite late, so the freckled boy fell asleep to gather more energy and recover as soon as possible. He needed to leave that hospital as soon as possible. It was daytime when Izuku barely slept due to all the thoughts running through his head. His mind was a mess. He wondered, what should I do? A nurse entered the room of the green-haired boy to check if everything was okay with him. Izuku, nurse, can I ask you a favor? Nurse, of course, dear, as long as it's within my reach. Izuku, I'd like not to receive any visitors, please. If someone wants to see me, please make up something, anything. I don't want to see anyone else. Nurse, are you sure? Because I heard many people are coming to see you today. Izuku, yes, I'm very sure. Please, I ask for your help. The nurse could sense some sadness in Izuku's voice. Nurse, all right, but I can only help you today, okay? Izuku, thank you very much. The nurse said goodbye to Izuku and went to the reception to continue with the paperwork. Izuku stayed in the room, resting for the rest of the day. At night, he would leave the hospital secretly. He didn't want to see anyone else, talking to All Might had bothered him a lot. About two hours passed before the whole Class A arrived. They had heard that Izuku had finally woken up. They wanted to see him and apologize, but there were four people who really wanted to see the freckled boy. On one side was young Momo Yaoyorozu, and there was also Izuku's mother, Inko Midoriya, who came along with Kota and Iri. They wanted to see Izuku and apologize for being so cruel to him, but they never expected what would happen. Nurse, I'm sorry, but young Izuku is very tired and needs as much rest as possible. You can't see him today. Everyone was saddened by what the nurse said, many believed their friends simply didn't want to see them. Mina, maybe Izuku would want to see us if someone hadn't acted like an idiot. Everyone heard what the girl said, and they knew who she was referring to. Todoroki, I know I acted like an idiot towards Midoriya, but it wasn't just me. We were all too cruel to him. He's always helped us without expecting anything in return, and how do we repay him? By betraying him. A small chaos began to unfold with everyone who wanted to see the freckled boy. Taking advantage of the chaos was a girl with a ponytail. Momo approached Bakugo to find out which room Izuku was in. Momo, whispering, tell me, Bakugo, which room is Izuku in? Bakugo, why would I tell you? As far as I know, you turned your back on him when he needed you most. Momo, please, just tell me. I really want to see him. Momo was very depressed. In the past few days, she could barely sleep. Bakugo could see the desperation in the girl, so he decided to help her. Bakugo, uck, his room is the first one around the corner. Go quickly, take advantage of all this chaos. Momo, thank you. Momo sneaked down the hallway without anyone seeing her, turned the corner, and entered the first room. Izuku was lying in bed, staring at the ceiling. He heard someone open the door and come in, thinking it was the nurse. Izuku, is something wrong, nurse? Izuku sat up in bed to see who he thought was the nurse, but he was surprised to see Momo. His first thought was, how did she get in? The two young people stared at each other for a couple of seconds. Momo was both happy and sad, while Izuku never changed his serious gaze. After staring at each other for a few seconds, Izuku lay back down, looking at the ceiling again. He didn't say anything, which worried Momo a little. Momo, hi. Izuku. I'm glad you're feeling a bit better. You know, I was really worried about you. There was no response. The freckled boy continued to look at the ceiling. Momo, I know you don't want to talk to me. I deserve it for being stupid with you. You should know that my parents pressured me to break up with you. I refused, but in the end, I succumbed to the pressure. Again, there was no response from Izuku. This made Momo a little nervous, but she wouldn't give up, she made it clear what her intentions were. Momo, Izuku. I know you might hate me now, and I deserve it. You've always helped me, you've encouraged me to keep going. 
you've saved me many times without expecting anything in return. Many times, you've broken your bones to save me. And now, Izuku. It's my turn to save you. I'll fight to regain your love. No matter what, I won't give up, even if it takes me my whole life. The young man remained in the same position, saying nothing. Momo, feeling a little sad, decided to leave before they realized she had entered without permission. Momo, well, I have to go, Izuku, but I'll come back to take care of you, even if you don't want me to. The raven-haired girl opened the door, and before closing it completely, she could hear in a faint whisper the boy saying, I don't hate you. Momo heard Izuku say this, and a glimmer of hope arose within her. She had a chance to win back the love of her life. After a while, everyone had finally left. They had resigned themselves to not seeing the freckled boy at least on that day, they would try again tomorrow. On the other hand, Momo was brainstorming how she would win the green-haired boy's heart again. Endless ideas filled her mind. Once again, night had fallen, and the hospital was in complete silence, perfect for Izuku to escape. He managed to remove all the connections to his body, he wasn't fully healed yet, but he had to leave as soon as possible. He left his room and looked both ways down the hallway to make sure no one was around. Once he made sure there was no one, he headed to the reception to get his things. Luckily, the nurse wasn't there, he thought maybe she had gone to the restroom, which was perfect for him to leave. Izuku grabbed his things and left the hospital, making sure he had everything. His sword was a bit damaged from the fight he had. Izuku walked for a few minutes when someone interrupted his path. Endeavor, what are you doing outside the hospital? You should be resting. Izuku then turned around and ran as fast as he could, hoping to leave the number one hero behind. A couple of minutes passed, and Izuku ducked into an alley, thinking he had lost the hero. Izuku, I think. I lost him. The freckled boy was quite tired, breathing heavily from all the energy he used to escape. Endeavor, do you want to try again? The professional hero was behind Izuku, which surprised the green-haired boy, who could no longer keep running. Endeavor, well? Will you tell me why you escaped from the hospital? Izuku, no. You wouldn't understand. You'd think I'm crazy. At that moment, two figures appeared at the far end of the alley. Question mark, maybe I can help you explain what's going on. Endeavor, who are you two? Question mark, I'm Tamayo, and this is Yushiro. Please, come with me if you want answers.